I'm Sister Hilda from the Benedictine Abbey at Chamberoo, Australia. Welcome to Wisdom from the Abbey. Today we're going to continue having a look at this special relationship between God and ourselves. And particularly today, let's open our hearts to what it is he might just be saying to our souls. To do that, I would like us to have a little look at the surrender prayer of St. Ignatius of Loyola. Far be it from me being a Benedictine to comment or offer a reflection on this beautiful Ignatian prayer, but I'm going to do it anyway. I don't need to tell you about St. Ignatius. You know about him, founder of the Jesuits, a marvellous man who had his own conversion and stayed true to that conversion. He took on God, he let God direct his life. And today, thanks to that wonderful conversion and Ignatius' own receptivity, millions of people have found God. Hopefully, as you're listening to this reflection today and finding your own place in it, you might be one more. The prayer goes like this. I'm, I'm going to read it through firstly, and, and no doubt for some of you, it's a very familiar prayer anyway. It goes like this. Take Lord and receive my liberty, my memory, my understanding, my entire will. All that I am and all that I possess, you have given me. I now return it to be disposed of according to your will. Give me only your love and your grace. With these I shall be rich enough and shall desire nothing more. Beautiful, isn't it? Let's have a look at it. Ignatius, in my mind here, has both bases covered when he says, take Lord and receive. They can kind of seem as though they're the same, but they're not quite. For instance, we have a lot of plants, you can't see them, but we have a great number of plants that go down our front driveway, our stairs. Now, if someone comes along and says to me, Sister Hilda, can I have a piece of that geranium out there? I'd say, take it, take it, it's yours. I'm not going to give it a thought. Take whatever you like. And tomorrow, I won't even remember that you took it. It's all yours. That's one aspect. And now here comes the next aspect with receive. If you give somebody a present for their birthday or Christmas or some important event, don't you go to a lot of trouble and when you give it to them, aren't you really giving part of yourself? And when you've given it to them, don't you hope that they will get that and so receive your present as though their hands are open wide and it's just not the gift that they're taking on board, they're taking you. Well, that's something of the sense that we have here in this prayer. We're saying to God, take whatever we're going to take, whatever we're going to do here, take it. I'm not going to give it another thought. Once it's yours, that's great. At the same time, I'm saying, and I want you to receive this, God, because with what I'm giving you here, I am giving you part of me. What are those things that Ignatius has us take and receive? The first one is, Take and receive my own liberty. In other words, my freedom. That's big. It's almost as though Ignatius is going for the big one straight away. By freedom, it breaks down to something like this. I give you then, God, my capacity to pick and choose, 
to I give you my capacity to do whatever I want. I give you my capacity to make my own plans, to direct my own life. Again, to do what I want to do. Along with that, we could almost be saying to God, I hear God, take and receive my control over my life. Now that's pretty scary. And if you stop and think about it, you realize just how frightening that could possibly be. But Ignatius had reached the stage where that's what he was ready to do. As we're praying this prayer, maybe we're at the stage that we're ready to do that too. So take and receive my own liberty, my freedom. And a little voice says, yes, yes. But if I give you my freedom, what will you do with it? I will find out. The next one is take and receive my memory. Let me make a little humorous remark here. There are some of us who would say that God has already got our memory. We used to have a really good memory, but we don't anymore. Well, that's obviously not what Ignatius is talking about. When I say take and receive my memory, that means I am very aware that my memory holds a whole lot of power. My memory can rise up and condemn me. My memory has uh, almost in a filing system got the things that I have done wrong, the mistakes I have made, the errors of judgment, etc., 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 etc. And of course, my memory also holds the happy times, the right decisions, the good things. But predominantly what tends to happen to us as human beings is that we tend to focus in on what's not been right rather than what has been right. If I say to God then, take and receive my memory, it can also almost feel as though I'm giving him something very tarnished. I'm also giving him a great deal of power. Cause just in case there are things God might have forgotten, my memory hasn't forgotten them. Then we move on and Ignatius says, take and receive my understanding. Again, maybe this is a feature of getting old, but as one gets older, one realizes how little one really understands at all. And one realizes too, how narrow our understanding can be. And our understanding, of course, is very much conditioned by our own training and our own experience. Let me tell you this little humorous story. When I was a child, I knew very well how to clean a kitchen floor. I did it the way my mother did it. And the way you cleaned a kitchen floor is you got down on your hands and knees with a scrubbing brush and you scrubbed the kitchen floor. Our kitchen floor was always immaculate. I was very good at scrubbing the kitchen floor. That's my understanding. Well, now when I entered the convent, I got moved to a particular convent and the kitchen floor needed cleaning. I said to the other sisters, don't worry, I'll, I'll, I'll do the floor, no problems at all. So down on my hands and knees I got with a scrubbing brush. I scrubbed so well, I took the top layer off the linoleum. The poor nuns came back and saw it. They were beautiful. They didn't utter one word of condemnation. They just said to me, oh, you've done the floor. 
You see, I didn't understand that there might just be another way to do the kitchen floor. There might just be another way of looking at a kitchen floor even. Not all linoleum is up to being scrubbed. A mop, a hot wash, all of that would have done the trick. It's got implications even for our bigger considerations because so often you and I bring our own, our own understanding to situations and we can be very, very wrong. We don't have enough information and yet so often that's the understanding that we impose on people. It's, a, it's a re another reason why sometimes it's a very good thing, that if I could make this comment, it's a very good thing that some people, some people have children when they're just a little bit older. Because what it means is that they bring a different understanding and a wider understanding sometimes to the raising of children. But that's, that's an aside. I, at this point, I'm simply saying to you, right, if we give our understanding to God, then we're aware that we're giving God something that's probably very limited and something that we wish were a lot wider. But it's our understanding. That's the important thing. Uh, it's totally acceptable to God. It's our understanding. And because it is our understanding, it's totally respected by God. Now look at this next one. This is very often the sticking point. Take and receive my entire will. Now, by the time we get to this, and I, I feel with this prayer that you almost have to work your way down. By the time you get to saying to God, take and receive my entire will, you're really asking for trouble. Straight away into our head comes, but if I give God my will, I could end up being a missionary in Mozambique. And I don't want to be a missionary in Mozambique. Or if I give God my will, I'll probably have to sell my house and live on the street. That will be God's will. We tend to always think that God's will for us is going to be the hard, horrible thing. And yet the truth is, for those of you who have children, let me ask you this. What's your will for your children? Wouldn't you tell me that your will is that your children should have lots and lots of friends and that when you're gone, they won't be on their own. Your will is that there should be love in their lives and that they should live happy and fulfilled lives. And if they manage to scrape enough money together to have a good meal and put a roof over their head, well, that's good. But primarily, primarily, your will for your children is that they should be loved with loving people around them. And then you can happily go off to your eternal reward. You know they're going to be all right. Now, if that's your will for your children, why should the will of God for us be any different? doesn't will the hard stuff. God wills exactly the same thing, that we should be surrounded by loving people, that there should be love all the way through our lives. Yes, of course there are going to be hard things. There always are. But God's will is that there should be love and happiness through all of that. It's a big ask. And I don't know that you can exactly hand your will over to God like that. I think you grow into it. But nonetheless, 
It's, it's part of Ignatius's prayer here. And furthermore, may I say, you can start practicing now though. When somebody serves you up a meal you don't like, smile and eat it anyway. Find little ways to go against yourself. You, you, you'll know what I'm talking about. The more you do that, the more you'll find just how much you have in fact handed over to God. I'll say more about that in a moment. This next part is just brilliant. All that I am and all that I possess, you have given to me. I now return it. Doesn't that sound like the ultimate in bad manners? Thank God, you gave me all this terrific stuff. Well, here you are, I have it back. I don't know that that's quite what Ignatius meant. Let me give you an example. And forgive me, I talk about my own family again, because I can, I can do that. And my father was a man of his time. He went to work and he came home. He lived just for his family. He didn't have the extra suit that he should have had. He never had a flash car and he never had the overseas holiday that he should have had because all his money got spent on the six of us. He died when he was only 56, too young, far too young. Now, if I could have him back, I would say to him, thank you, Dad. All that we are today, we got from you. Now, look at Greg. Look at the wonderful contribution he's made to education. Look at the number of children who've made their way through his classes and are better off today because they have came across Greg. You did that, Dad. You're the one who scrimped and saved and sent him to a good school. You're the one who enabled him to have the PhD that he's got today. And look at Michael, happiest bus driver in Sydney. Look at the number of people who miss other buses just so they can get on Michael's bus because Michael will talk to them. He'll make their day a better day. You did that, Dad. Thank you. Michael's the man he is today because of all that you did for him. And look at Louise. Look at the fine job she's done with the family. Look at the contribution she's made to deaf education. You did that, Dad. You showed her how to interact with people. She's so much like you anyway. And look at, look at Anne-Marie. Look at the woman of integrity she is. Look at how that school up there at Mossvale think the world of her, and why wouldn't they? You can trust Anne-Marie. She got that from you, Dad. And look at Therese, look at the fine job she did looking after Mum. Look at how, look at the in innovative things that she did in that library and still does. Look how respected she is. You did that, Dad. We can't give you back the suits and the overseas holidays and the flash car. We can't give you back the life you should have had. But in our own lives now, we return what you have done for us. All that we are and all that we have we got from you. Here we are in the same breath now saying that exact thing to God. And may I suggest that you might just like at some point to think about that. What is it that you know that you have received from God? What is it that you can say all I have and possess I got from you? And when you give it back to God, what does it look like? Oh, how I wish I could talk to you and find out. It keeps going. 
give it back now. We give it back to you, Lord, to be disposed of according to your own will. Because all we want, God, in this prayer is you. Give me only, God, your love and your grace. That's enough for me. If I know at the end of the day, God, that you are my God, if I know at the end of the day that you're the one I can count, of, count on, if I've got that, I've got everything. It's not a fat bank account or a Rolls Royce or a yacht that's going to be with me on my deathbed. That's not going to get me through. What's going to get me through is you. What's going to get me through is knowing that I have your love, God. I'm rich. I might look at my heart and my soul are incredibly rich thanks to you. This is only part one. Part one of that prayer, I seem to be handing everything over to God. Take and receive. Well, here comes the surprise. And the surprise is, neither you nor I can pray that prayer unless God has first said to our souls, Judy, Dot, John, could, could, it, could, it, could, it, could I ask you, would you take and receive my freedom? Could I give you the freedom of the children of God? Would you take it? Well, the ticket is, if you're going to take the freedom that God offers in your life, you move along your own. And then this next beautiful thing. And can, can you hear almost the, the reticence in God? Because God never likes imposing anything on you. Take and receive my memory. Because see, my memory of your life is very different to yours. You see somebody who messed up. You see someone who made mistakes. I see somebody who was lost. I see someone who was frightened. I see someone who was too young to know what they were doing. Your memory can actually play tricks on you, says God. And that, that's a truth, it can. Would you, would you take my memory? If you take my memory, yours can go and I can replace it with all the peace that I want you to have. I don't know about you, but even as I'm going through this, oh, I would love to have a video camera on the memory of God in my regard. It'd be a heck of a lot better than the one I've got. But still God goes on. Could I give you my understanding? Would you take and receive my understanding of things? Again, my understanding differs a little bit from yours. My understanding looks at life more in colors than in the black and white you've got. It's worthwhile you asking God, tell me about your understanding, God. And this next bit, here I imagine that God almost begs us, will you please take my will? My will isn't nearly as crushing as you think it is. My will wants to give you absolutely everything that's gonna make for your happiness. Will you please take it? And when you take it, can, can you catch, I'm giving you part of me. That's, the be that's one of the most beautiful things there about Jesus on the cross. What was he doing? Completely surrendered to the Father's will. 
There was no difference between his will and the Father. One day it'll be the same for you and me. No difference between your will and God's will. I take a liberty in this next bit, but it's a liberty I'm prepared to take. See, I think God loves us so much and oh, how I wish I had the words to tell you how much. God loves us so much that he can look you in the eye and say to you, all that I am and all that I possess, I've got from you. Now that almost seems like heresy, except when you see it in terms of the incredible generosity of God. God gives and we receive and we give and receive. It goes round and round and round and round and God can say, all that I am, because I live exclusively for you, I get from you. I now return it. I want nothing more than to give you my own life. Skip to the bottom of this now. And here's God saying to you, if all I've got is your love and your smile, that's enough. I'm a very rich God. In this prayer, I put it to you. You and I truly meet the God whose only longing is to be totally united with us. May I suggest that you take on this prayer. And from time to time, you, you may not say the whole lot, but from time to time, you might just take a little bit of it. In moments of hardness, when you don't know what to do, take and receive, Lord, my will. When your memory comes up to condemn you, take and receive my memory. And while you're at it, make God's day. Isn't it terrific? We have the capacity to make God's day. Make God's day, say to him, all that I am and all I possess, God, I received from you. I now return it to you with all the love in my heart. Shalom World Television is coming to Australia. This is a great gift. It's been gifted to many parts of the world and now it's our Australian turn to receive it with open arms. I welcome it, I bless it. It's going to really support family life, married life, youth. Give us a resource that uh, we know that, that we need really help in the, great help in these areas. May Almighty God bless this new resource coming to our land in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Shalom World, God's own channel.